dear brothers and sisters in Christ, dear Vinci friends. Two Wednesdays ago, Pastor Justin surprised us in the middle of this Easter season with a sermon about the wise men or the Magi from the East who went to visit the newborn Jesus whose star they had seen rise. Pastor Justin compared the only and plain report we have about this story in the Gospels, in the second chapter of Matthew, with the elaborate stories that have appeared over the centuries about these mysterious men. One of those stories is the story about the fourth wise man who did not make it to the manger with Caspar, Melchior, and Balthasar. His name was Ertiban. Like the other Meishai, he saw the star in the heaven proclaiming that a king had been born among the Jews. Like the other Meishai, Ertiban set out to see the newborn ruler carrying treasures to give as gifts to the child, a diamond, a jasper, and a ruby. However, he stopped along the way to help a dying man, which made him late to meet with the caravan of the other three wise men. Because he missed the caravan and he could not cross the desert with only a horse, he had to sell the diamond in order to buy the camels and supplies necessary for the trip. He then began his journey but arrived in Bethlehem too late to see the child because the parents had fled with the child to Egypt. Instead, Ertiban saved the life of a child at the price of another of his treasures, the ruby. He then traveled to Egypt and to many other countries, searching for Jesus for many years and performing acts of love along the way. After 33 years, Ertiban arrived in Jerusalem. He did not know that it was exactly at the moment when Jesus would be crucified. He spent his last treasure, the Jasper, to ransom a young woman from being sold into slavery. He was then struck in the head by a falling roof tile and was about to die, thinking that he had failed in his quest to find Jesus. But in this moment, he heard the voice telling him, whenever you did it, for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. Ertivan died in a calm radiance of wonder and joy. After all, he had found the king, and the king had received his gifts. This story is related to the Bible texts I want to base my reflection for this evening on. The first is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus defines himself with these words, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The other texts are from the book, The Acts of the Apostles, where Christianity is repeatedly named the way. For instance, in chapter 9, it says that Saul, before his conversion to Christianity and his name changing to Paul, persecuted all men and women who belonged to the way. Chapter 18 of Act um, talks about the Jew who was an eloquent man well versed in the scriptures 
who had been instructed in the way of the Lord. In chapter 19, Paul himself says, I persecuted this way up to the point of death by binding both men and women and putting them in prison. Why is the way such a fitting name for Christianity? Why was it so appropriate that Jesus would define himself as the way? Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish thinker from the 19th century, used to say that Christianity is more about the how than about the what, that the means are more important than the end. Christianity is not so much a set of beliefs we have to accept and have confidence in as it is a way of living. Kierkegaard's words are exactly these. One thinks that the end is the main thing, that the one who is striving should reach the end without being too precisely concerned about the means. But this is not so, and to reach the end in this way is ungodly impatience. In sight of eternity, the relationship between means and end is rather the opposite, Kierkegaard concludes. It is common in our lives that we define a goal and then develop a plan to accomplish it. It also happens that our society, with its speed in production, information, traveling, etc., teaches us that it is possible to get something, anything, in the blink of an eye, and we become impatient when it takes too long to get that something. Often, we spend all the time running from one destination to the next, from one project to the next, from one errand to the other. In the words of Ralph Emerson, we forget to finish the moment. We forget to find the journey's end in every step of the road. We forget to leave the greatest number of good Hours. We forget that we need a healthy balance between doing and being, between planning and letting go, between producing results and going through the required processes. What is worse? We forget to do what Ertiban, the fourth wise man, was so good at remembering. We forget to look around us for a friendly encounter, a helpless fellow, an inspiring act of generosity, all these small things that can give an adventurous touch to our lives and even enrich our path if we are open to it. These seemingly small things are not so small, they are indeed the most important things in our lives. They are the things that give life its ultimate meaning and depth. They happen regardless of and despite our goals, our plans, our calculations. They happen to us. They come to us as gifts that often open up unsinkable possibilities. They change and modify the goals we had up to that point. It is as if we do not get to define and set up the goals and ends that matter. New and previously unsuspected goals and ends find their way to us instead. This is important to consider and think carefully about when we are living in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and with the sheltering in place order still effective. I remember when all this began and we expected that we would celebrate Easter in the sanctuary. 
Many of us thought of it as a parenthesis, an interruption for a little while that in the worst case scenario would delay and put on hold the accomplishment of some of our goals and ends. But after that parenthesis, we would resume the life we had before. We did not expect that the pandemic would disrupt our lives and our goals as much as it is doing it. I am sure that all of us can enumerate a long list of things we had hoped to do and experience and that the pandemic has prevented us from doing and experiencing. Many people have lost their jobs. Many employees have been forced on furlough. Many people have had their income reduced. Many people have seen themselves in the undesirable situation of having to close their businesses and terminate their employees. Many graduating students are seeing their graduation ceremonies postponed indefinitely, if not altogether cancelled, and their prospects of getting a job fast has probably vanished. Many people have not had other choice but to continue working for the poor pay and under unsafe conditions. And not least, many people have gotten sick and are getting sick and an outrageous number of people have died and are dying. However, the pandemic does not exempt us from having to live out our faith here and now. How this happens depends, of course, on our circumstances. Even when physical contact is banned, we can and should find other ways of staying in close contact with family, friends and people who are alone. Some of us are probably still resourceful enough, as Ertiban was it, to do good to others. Maybe some of you will also have the surplus of energy and enthusiasm necessary to think about what, what has to change in our country. Maybe some of you will have the energy to pressure policymakers to be more resolute in, enact, in enacting policies that will protect people's health and people's ability to put food on the table, keep the lights on and live in safe, safe homes they can afford. Others will probably only be able to receive the good that others will do to them. And some people can be so overwhelmed that even to reciprocate with a word of thanks or a smile will require them to come up with a lot of effort and attention. something else. Maybe we have missed some opportunities to do good and to receive good. But I am also sure that we have all already been doing these kinds of things. These things have given us deep moments of meaning, of purpose and of connection in the midst of the pandemic. To cite the line of one of John Lennon's songs, Beautiful Boy, life is, after all, what happens to you while you are busy making other plans. The way of Jesus is and always has been one of kindness and generosity, of looking out for the weakest and the lowest, of raising up the poor and the suffering. And is there a more pertinent time than now to be and do and be the recipient of all of this? Even if we have to do it in new ways, is there a better time than now So go now and live out the loving way of Jesus. 
and may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.